business? Well, let me tell you, you might be surprised, but I'm gonna tell you that it's okay. You're like, what? Like, hey guys, it's Andrew Houston here with Trady Tips in the Truck. It is Monday evening, just out picking up some batteries and some stuff, uh, returning a golf shirt, what have you. Anyways, um, I'm here with uh, Proffer Contractors. We help contractors get more control, more freedom, and uh, make their business a hell of a lot more fun. Uh, making them a lot more money, a lot more profits to pay for their freedom. So let's talk about this for a second. Um, is it okay not to be working on the business? You know what? I'm going to tell you it is. And you're like, what? It is because here's the thing. We're going to have different days from time to time, right? We're going to have days where we're freaking just swamp packed curveballs that were, have been thrown at us. Boomerangs, you know, are coming back. Uh, not the way that we wanted to. You know, things just aren't going as planned. And especially if you're in a, you know, if you're in a peak season right now, yeah, it's busy. So you're going to have times when you just got to get down and dirty, get the hands dirty and, uh, and make things happen. Um, and, you know, actually that was a bit of uh, my scenario there, um, I guess about maybe about two weeks ago and for about a week and a bit, uh, when my right hand man was, uh, was out having a vacation and I intentionally decided to, you know, get into the trenches um, and really, you know, it, it had been a while since I'd been doing some sales and what have you. So I wanted to get in the trenches and and uh, see if I still had it. <laughs> that was the first thing. Um, and as well to, you know, test some things out. But, you know, when it comes to working on the business, it isn't always easy, okay, to get the time to work on the business. And I think sometimes we beat ourselves up a little bit too much. Hey, Curtis. You know, beat ourselves up too much saying that, hey, I got to work on the business every day or every week. I mean, yeah, okay, that'd be great in an ideal environment, but you're going to have different roller coasters, different cycles in the business, and there's going to be different things that, you know, are unknown. Um, and especially if you're busy, it only takes a little bit extra, you know, what, the, what did they say? You know, just one more straw broke the camel's back, right? Sometimes the littlest thing when you're, when you're busy, um, can be the breaking point of just holding yourself back from having the time to focus uh, on the business, to be able to have the time to work on the business. Uh, so what do we do? Well, um, when it comes to not working on the business, those are gonna, those moments are gonna happen from time to time. But what's not okay is if, I mean, if you're not able to work on the business for a week or so, um, that's not too bad. If you're, if this becomes something that's habitual, like even into three weeks, a month, and it just keeps going on and on, okay, well, that, that's a different thing. That's a different problem. But if, if it's in little tiny spurts, maybe a week or two, you know, where you just got to put your head down, put in some extra hours and get shit done, get up a little bit extra early, you know, maybe get a check off a couple of things, um, you know, on the weekend, things of that nature. Look, I'm not oblivious to this. You know, I don't think anybody's oblivious to it. So stop, number one. Number one, stop beating yourself up. Number two, ask yourself, is this just a spike um, that's going to happen over the next week or two? Or is it is it longer? Is it like, is this been going on for a month? Has this been going on for like a month and a half, two months? Anything in that range, it's more than just a spike, Okay. It's the fact that, um, you know, we don't have a, either A, the right systems in place, B, the right team in place from a capacity perspective, or C, the right systems and the right team to run the systems, allowing us to work on the business and, and freeing up time for ourselves. So first of all, you know, like I said, don't beat up yourself if, if it's just a, a bit of a sprint, um, you know, if it's a, a week or two. Um, secondly, identify if it's something that's reoccurring right something that's going on and on and on and if that is the case then we got to do something about it and here's why so that's number two right identify which place you're at is it just a spike right is it an exception to the rule or is this something that is just long term going on okay if it is something that's long term going on you've got to be super careful and here's why number three okay three headed dragon here um number three is because what will tend to happen is that We'll get sucked into being on the tools. We'll get sucked into doing things that is not really growing the business. It's just getting the business to get through um, itself in the sense that you're just 
getting things done uh, to get them done. We're not being strategic about it. And what will tend to happen, and you tell me if, if you can relate to this, is um, we will take the pedal off completely, tend to take the pedal off of things like sales and marketing, okay? And let's just talk about that for a second. What will, what will happen then is that if we take the throttle right off of sales and marketing and don't analyze things properly from that perspective, all of a sudden we'll look ahead and it's like, oh shit, now we got a dry spot. Because what tends to happen in the world of the trades, which a lot of people don't get is, you know, we've got to cultivate, right? We've got to plant seeds, we've got to cultivate, we've got to do a quote. In a lot of cases, we've got to follow up. The, you know, the, the prospects got to think about it. And then they gotta, you know, they've got to decide is this what they want, and they make some changes, and then they finally give the green light. That could be in your world, a week or two. That could be a month. Um, it could be longer than that. But if you take your foot completely off of marketing and sales, and I don't care if you're at the busiest part in your business, you've got to always be marketing, and you've always got to be looking at sales from the horizon. Okay, like if we look here, you know, there's the, there it is, there's the horizon, right? always got to be looking ahead because otherwise what will happen is that we'll get dry spouts okay and when the dry you know the dry spout uh you know cycle happens the part the problem with that is that it takes us two three four plus weeks sometimes to get that momentum happening again right because we've lost that momentum and you don't just fix the problem, right? You've got this problem like right now. You don't have any work for the guys. Then all of a sudden you're at risk of losing your guys. So, you know, make sure that you're consciously aware of always making sure that to some degree you're working on your marketing and sales. And I didn't say the same degree, all right? It, it, it's going to vary. If you're in a peak season right now, then we've got to be looking for work outside of what work we've got booked out. Um, and we still got to be putting our name out there. We still got to be putting our brand out there. I would rather you have, honest to God, I'd rather you have way more demand than you do have supply because then that puts you in the driver's seat. And I think that's an important thing to think about. Sometimes we always complain, we bitch and complain like, man, a phone's ringing off the hook. I got too much work. Well, look, let's, let's look at things through a different set of lenses. How about, you know, we're booked out 80% and now we're still marketing and we're get, able to cherry pick the work that we want outside of that zone of, of the work that's been booked. Maybe you've got work that's been booked out a month or two or even three. Uh, but now you, you gotta keep making sure that people see you, people know you, they, they, they don't forget about you. Because let me tell you this, the minute that you let up on that 100%, and I see it happen all the time, like, man, I don't have time for any marketing or sales. Well, as minute you get that dry spout. And when, you, when that happens and your competition sniffs it, you are at risk at losing some of your best clients, okay? Um, because guess what? That means that when you let up and they don't, they they are potentially, you know, have the ability to, you know, find that crack, right, in the, in the armor of your marketing and your sales and sneak into some of your class A, uh, maybe A plus clients. So guys, make sure you never let up on your marketing, okay? Um, no matter if you're just focusing on it, you know, 20% versus your normal 50, 60, 70% of your time, don't let up on your marketing um, and your sales 100%. That's crazy. Okay. It's, it's craziness. Um, so, you know, it comes to working on the business. Yeah. You're going to have certain cycles. Identify what the true problem is. So that's, so number one, if it's just a little tiny spurt of a week or two, uh, and it's a spike, um, and it's an exception, okay, then it is what it is. You gotta get down, you gotta get dirty, you gotta get shit done. Um, and sometimes we gotta, you know, we just gotta do what we gotta do to get through those those couple of weeks. If it's reoccurring, number two, then we gotta identify if it is reoccurring, is it the systems, a lack of systems? Is it a lack of people? Um, or is it, you know, the combo platter of a lack of systems and a lack of people, okay? Um, uh, that, that's causing us not to be able to work on the business. If you don't identify that, then you're just going to be in this, you know, in this, you know, sort of like a mouse trap, running and running and running, the, you know, in this wheel, and uh, and it's never you're never going to get out of it. Okay, uh, so make sure you identify that. And the next is number three is make sure you do uh, you always keep some level of pressure on marketing and sales, even if you're completely swamped, because you got to keep your brand out there, you got to keep your name out there, and you're it's always better to be in more you know, demand then supply. Okay. And thank, 
Thank God for that, okay? Because that's when you can up your, your pricing. That's when you get the cherry pick. So don't complain about it. Be grateful for it. Um, just be, you know, have the proper system in place like we talk about with our clients here. Have the proper system in place to filter fast, how to set the rules of the game with your team, uh, how to set the rules of the game with your clients, how to position things properly. Um, and iPool serves as what? What's a good type of advertising? Uh, I tell you what, the best type of advertising, uh, iPool, is um, definitely what I call is trust transference. So that's uh, some form of referral. And I think advertising, I, I tell you, hands down, the best advertising is getting salespeople that's not on your payroll. And we've talked about this on some of these other, on another video I did, which is using strategic alliance iPool. So that's uh, dealing with like-minded other contractors that are after the same clientele as you, but in a non-compete way. So it'd be like an electrical contractor partnering up with a plumbing contractor that's going after the same builders, things of that nature. And like we work, uh, like Curtis, right? Curtis, we worked at a whole system for that. Hey, I'm curious to see Curtis how that's going, dude. Um, and it's, it's really getting a whole sales team that's not on your payroll. So... Um, and then that's really transferring other people's trust that people have with one person and transferring it to you. Okay. Through trust. Um, yeah. So guys, look, don't beat yourself up. Realize where you're at. You can't always work on the business all the time. That's life. Um, get over it. Um, and, and make sure, Hey Adam, how's it going, brother? Make sure that you that you recognize that the really really the things that you do and and you know sometimes getting your hands dirty I got my hands dirty there a week and a half ago I'm proud of it you know it got me to really see things that that I had not seen in a long time and to help me reflect on you know what's working uh, what can be improved and also being able to see it through the eyes of my own team members uh, to realize what they go through in a week. Um, and remember what that's like, you know, I think it's always important for us to be willing to get on the field every once in a while, you know, Hey James, how's it going, man? Hey Adam, cause getting on the field with your team, not all the time, but getting on the field with your team, lets them know that you understand where they're coming from. And, um, I think it, it really gets you from a cultural perspective, gets them to, to say, Hey, Andrew's, you know, caring about us. And, and, you know, as the owner, he's willing to, you know, Get in there, get dirty, and and see what it's like for himself, okay? Um, it's a good thing for you guys to do every once in a while, but it's not good to make it permanent. It's not good to be on the tools all the time. Um, it's not good to be sucked into the business all the time and not being able to work on the business. So recognize the difference, and that's it, guys, okay? So um, be grateful, recognize where you're at, and uh, and that's it from Trady Tips in the Truck. Uh, work harder on yourself, on yourself than you do your business and your business will always work harder for you. Okay. Um, by systems and by the teams that you can run the business. All right, guys, this is it. I got to head home. We'll catch you on the flip side, uh, from Andrew Houston from Profit for Contractors. You guys want to get more insights, more tips, more tricks, more, uh, templates, uh, join our contractor tips group. And for my clients in the champion CEO group, love you guys, man. Um, and keep up the great work. All right. We'll catch you guys on the flip side later.